the weather. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, grateful to be in your presence. And it is the best place to be. We want to say thank you for drawing us closer to yourself and to your heart. We ask, Lord, that today you will be glorified in this service. May we experience you afresh. May our worship, Lord, truly be unto you in spirit and in truth. We give you all the glory and we say, Spirit of the living God, come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We say the invocation together. Almighty God, to you all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the tors of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we praise God. Oh, 
Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My holiness, my righteousness. Oh, God, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My holiness, my righteousness. Oh, God, I need you. My righteousness, O oh God, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, I want to welcome you all to God's presence, to Main Street United Methodist Church. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time, either here in person or online, we want to let you know that this is the right place for you to be. Uh, because we eat God's word, we live by God's word, and we also give the warmth that we know that you can find in God. And so I would like to uh, know you better and also to reach out to you. And if you are here in person, please use the notification card right in front of you to communicate with us. And if you have a minute after the service, I would also like to have a word with you and pray with you. But if you are worshiping online with us for the first time, uh, please find uh, our email and also the phone number that you can call to reach out to us. God bless you. Uh, for us, please, uh, I call your attention to the news, but I have a couple of uh, things to uh, mention. The youth, after this service, and that will be at uh, 4 p.m., I think. They will be moving to East End Double Deep. And I believe you're going to have good experience there. I had good experience there last year. And I'm happy that they are back again. And Tuesday, we still continue to meet for our Bible study. And uh, we encourage you to either come in person or you... Uh, Call in online and let us study God's word together. Next week is the noisy bucket week. This evening, uh, the cluster of churches of United Methodist Church uh, will be meeting uh, for Lenten service and worship at McGrossville United Methodist Church at 6.30 p.m. If you can come in person, I encourage you to do so. But if not, uh, we've already sent out how you can also worship online to you. So check your email and uh, let us worship together. Uh, we had a very great experience at Bunker Hill last Sunday. And um, uh, Mr. Mai, yeah, he was there last Sunday. Uh, together with myself and my wife. And I don't know how many of you log in online, but please do so tonight if you cannot come in person. And next Sunday, we will expect uh, all these churches to come here next Sunday evening. And uh, please, uh, we encourage you to have it in mind and be here at 6.30 and let us worship God together. I will be meeting with the high schoolers and college students uh, next Sunday 
immediately after the service, immediately, immediately after the service, just for about uh, 15 minutes. So if you know any high schooler or college student who is not here currently and who is not worshiping online, please help me inform them. And uh, it's a very important meeting with you. We encourage you to please keep on using the opportunity of the prayer group platform to let us pray for you and pray for your loved ones and for situations that you know that we may not know. Uh, we meet every Monday and uh, we would like you to please send your prayers to us so that we can pray. Now, out there is a cross. How many of you have seen that cross? A big cross outside there. Okay. And it is a vision that God gave me while I was praying uh, last week. And uh, I saw the cross and I saw people coming around, you know, casting their bodies and nailing their problems on the cross. And it was a very touching moment. And when the vision was over, I asked God, what is this? And what he told me is that this is a journey to Good Friday. A journey to Good Friday. Ask the people to cast their problems, their needs on this cross. Let them nail it to the cross. So I shared that vision uh, with, uh, with my family, and we, we prayed. And uh, I shared it also with uh, Mr. Mines, and it surprised me. Immediately, I think the following day, he brought a cross, uh, pieces of wood, and uh, he nailed them together, and we have that cross. And we have dedicated that cross uh, to God's glory. And so I want to say thank you so much to you and your wife for your effort in holding and doing all that uh, last Sunday, I mean last week. So I want to encourage you to please uh, get a piece of paper. It could be a piece of paper like this. It could be smaller. It could be bigger. Uh, write something that you don't want in your life or in the life of somebody that you know and nail it to that cross we have a hammer there and i'm still going to provide another hammer uh, sometime today we have nails there uh, nail it to the cross by faith and trust god that is going to take over all those issues and if you know anyone anyone who is not even a member of our church, and you know that they have a, a need, they have a situation, I want to encourage you to inform them. Encourage them to come in. That is why we put it there. We didn't put it here so that people can easily walk through our doors and nail their problems to that cross and go. It may be a sickness. It may be a challenge. Let them nail it to the cross and trust God. Every day, I want to tell you, if nobody is praying, I'm praying. I'm praying at that cross. I'm telling the Lord to have his way. And we believe that he's going to do so. Um, I, I can't say more than that, but please, I just want to encourage you. Uh, it's a journey to Good Friday. By Good Friday, uh, God will tell us what to do with it. And I know that his name will be glorified in our lives. If you have started reading Luke, uh, please continue to do so. If you have not started, I want to encourage you. You can still do so. Uh, you may want to do it by covering all the ones you have missed. And you may also want to just begin from today and continue. Uh, but I want to encourage you to do it uh, faithfully and take note of whatever God drops in your heart as you read this gospel. And we have two timers uh, um, um, tool over there that you can pick and pick for whoever is also reading and um, let them observe two minutes of silence before they begin their readings.
God bless you as you do all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, focus on the children. Children, please come out. Awesome. You want to find somewhere to sit. Good morning. Mm. All right. Hmm. Okay. Let me ask you a question very quickly. If you are given a cross and apple, which one are you going to pick? Let me start with you. If you pick the cross, how about you? You pick the cross, how about you? You pick the cross, awesome. You pick the apple, awesome. You pick the cross, wow. Well, you know what? All of you are correct, but you know, um, this is actually not apple, it is you know, a picture of the heart. How many of you have drawn a heart before? Oh, wow. Okay, that's great. And, you know, um, and I'm so happy that you will pick the cross, you pick the apple, or oh, take it. Um, that is something I'm going to give you, and you're going to take it home, and when you get home, you're going to write your name on it. Okay. And uh, you can also write your name on it here before you go. Thank you. All right. So, I title today a Decision Sunday. Okay? A Decision Sunday. How many of you have made a decision before? You've decided before, okay, to do something? Good, good. Now, you're going to hear Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith is sitting over there. He's going to read a passage very soon about how Joshua called the Israelites. Children were there, children like you, and adults were also there, and he told them to decide. He told them to choose whom they are going to serve. And Jesus also said to us, we have to choose whom we are going to serve, either God or Mammon. Now, Mammon is not a good thing. Mammon is a devil spirit, okay? The spirit of money, okay? It's a demon, it's not a good one. And so, when Jesus Christ came, he came and he died for us. He died for you, okay, on the cross. You know, on this kind of cross, he died for you. Can you point at any other cross in this church? Show me any cross. Good, great. Where is any other cross here? There's another one downstairs. Great. Oh, my. Where do we have another cross? This is another one. Wow. Where is another cross? This one, that one, great. Where do we have another one? Mm, oh, on the door. Wow. There is still another cross. Oh my God, this is a cross church. Um, show me another one. Great! Over there. You see, uh, Jesus Christ died on that cross and he said to us, if we give our heart to him, like the apple, is going to bless it, is going to take it, and is going to help us. How many of you want to give your heart to Jesus? You want to give your heart? What do you see here? A cross? 
And he says, accepting Jesus into your heart. Into your heart. Do you want to make that decision today? You want to go with Jesus? Great. Do you want to pray this prayer with me then? But before you pray the prayer, it means if you give your heart to Jesus, you are going to tell him to continue to help you. You are not going to bully anybody. Okay? When mommy and we go to bed, when they say, go and pray, you're going to do what? You're going to pray. Okay? When they tell you, stand up and clean that place where you finish eating, what are you going to do? You clean it. Great. Are you ready to make that decision today? Okay, pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for the cross. You died for me. And you have given me your spirit. Today, Jesus, come into my heart and live there. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Father, thank you for this, your children. I pray for them. That, Lord, as they have made this decision today, you will help them to grow in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, shout amen. 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 Shout Jesus. Jesus. I, I, can't, I didn't hear you all. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Great. Now, when you get home, write your name at the bottom of this paper and write today's date and then just make sure you paste it on your room, okay? On the wall, okay? All right? Bless you. Bye.
But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods that your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Israelites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The next reading is from the psalm, and please uh, uh, follow me in the responsive reading in Psalm 16, verses 5 through 11. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary line have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will let your faithful one see decay. You may know to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. The third reading is the New Testament lesson. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 through 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and man. Please stand as we reaffirm what we believe about our God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue to pray. Christiana.
We bow our heart, we lay down our lives unto you this morning. We desire, Heavenly Father, that you come into our life. We desire, Heavenly Father, that you give us the grace to serve you. For your word says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, that if we fully obey the Lord our God and carefully follow the command that he gives us, that he will set us high above all the nations of the earth. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray that you take us to the place where all that we desire is to serve you, where all that we desire is to praise you, is to give you all, to cause all glory to belong to you. Lord, we pray that in your name, as we worship you, as we serve you, give us the grace, O oh God, to be to be set as high above all sickness, all sins, O oh God, in our life. Give us the grace to be set high and above. Heavenly Father, compromise in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace, O oh God, to be all that you want us to be. Lord, we pray that in your name, that, that your will will be done in our lives. We pray for as many that are sick in our church. Lord, that you will visit them, O oh God. That you lay your healing hands upon them and you will make them whole. For the Bible says, by your stripes we are healed. Lord, let your word come to, to fulfillment in your lives. Let your word come alive, O oh King of glory, that they will be healed, O oh God. That they will be healed because you alone can do it. That which only you can do. Do in their lives, Heavenly Father. As we come here every Sunday to worship you, give us the grace to grow from glory to glory mm. and from strength to strength yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you for answer prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Precious Father, you are God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we could think or imagine. We raise before you today those who are mourning at this time. Lord, our heart breaks when we hear about the devastating laws that came through a house fire in Miami County which claimed the lives of three young children. We pray Lord Almighty today with a heavy heart For the entire family of Gingrich, who at this time have lost Miracle, Stephen, and Wilma, we ask, O oh God, for your comfort for them. We ask, O oh God Almighty, that you we heal these loss, these wounds. We pray, Father, that you will continue, O oh God, to show us your mercy in our land. We pray against such disaster. Lord, we do not want such things again. We don't want it again, Lord Almighty. Please help us, Lord, in all things. That as we, O oh God, continue to trust in you, that we, we also continue to be careful. And the Lord Almighty, we, we continue, O oh God, to find our succor in you. We ask, Lord Almighty, for as many who are mourning at this time that we do not even know, that you will please, Lord, comfort them. Lord, we lift up Tammy and her mom, Nina Ward, to you who were in a serious car accident. 
We pray right now, Father, that you will please, Lord, touch them. Touch them, Lord, especially Nina. Please, Lord, touch her in ER right now. We pray, Father, Lord, that you will speak to our joints. Speak, O oh Lord Almighty, your word to the bones, the flesh, the bloodstreams. Lord, we pray that the internal bleeding will also stop. Lord, we pray that you will give understanding and strength to the medical practitioners who are attending to them and many more people who are in the hospital right now. We trust you, Father, that you will do this and many more for us. As our children will be going to uh, the pizza house today, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will go before them. And the Lord Almighty, you will glorify your name in their fellowship. It is a time for them, Lord, to rejoice together. And I pray, Father, that you, Lord Almighty, we bless their meeting. We give you all the glory. We pray all these prayers. And many more, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities, that we may happen that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Special music.
Is it yours? Is it yours? Is it yours? Yeah. Is it yours? Is it yours? It's yours. Okay. Hey Amen. Thank you so much. That was great. Mm. Please, I invite you to find the someone outline in the bulletin. Let us pray together. Father, thank you so much for your word that is able to save, able to deliver. Thank you, Lord, for how you have continued to guide us, to reveal your word to us. And I pray today that you will bless this word and you will make our heart to be receptive and help us, Lord Almighty, to be doers of your word. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I still continue on the series, Walking with God. Walking with God. Last Sunday, God spoke to us about walking with God in times like these. And we were told that we are all living in very uncertain times. We saw Noah as a man who lived in a time when there was all kinds of evil. And the Bible says that Noah found favor in God's sight. And God saved him and his household, even though God had wanted to save the whole world of that time by asking Noah to build a very huge ark that will be enough for everyone to get in. But uh, people were adamant and they would not listen. And I concluded that sermon by encouraging us to walk with God by praying for God's favor, practicing and living out our baptismal pledge loving and talking righteousness and discountenancing filthiness and ungodliness. Today, I will be talking about choosing whom you will serve. Choose whom you will serve as a continuation of this series. Joshua 24 verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestor, which they served beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In this test, Joshua made his resolution known to the children of Israel after a very long farewell speech at a special gathering at Shechem. Shechem is very important for many reasons, many reasons which I would not be able to go into today. But right there, the scripture says to us that Joshua told the people, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
Now Joshua had a particular strong case to make. As with the previous chapters, everyone gathered to listen to Joshua as he provided a potted summary of the history of Israel. He took the children of Israel through the journey they've been into, which some of them did not actually know about because they were not alive when it started. And he told them how they were in slavery and how God miraculously delivered them and how God provided for them in the wilderness many blessings that they enjoyed from God he told them and now they are in the promised land the land that God had foretold would be given to them the land that did not belong to them but God had to drive out those who were occupying the place so that they can take over that land as a God who makes promise and fulfill it even though it took a long time for them to get there they still got there now although Joshua told a long story one should note that the storytelling was not just on the characters involved in the story or to help them remember the key dates those were not the reasons the reason was god himself their deliverer their savior their helper their redeemer the one who carried them on the eagle's wings according to the scriptures so joshua was interested in the life and the future of the people because at that time he was ready to go and be with his ancestors. Now, having presented all the evidence of God's faithfulness to the people, Joshua calls for a decision that represents a renewal of the covenant relationship that existed between Israel and God. They are a people of relationship with God. Now, it is in this context that Joshua admonished Israel to exercise their freedom to choose whom to serve. He didn't force it on them, even though he made suggestions to them, like every parent would do. Uh, he told them not to be afraid. And he told them to fear the Lord, that is to reference God, he told them to serve God wholeheartedly in a situation where there will not be anything like dilly darling at all. He told them to put away the gods that were in their midst. That they had to make a decision. When he told them to choose the person they were going to serve, he advised them to choose God. We know the people chose God, but we'll get there and see whether truly they stood with God, with their decision. Now, before I move further, I want to quickly call your attention to two notables, two things that we need to be mindful about Joshua. Joshua as a book and Joshua himself as a man. The first thing is the word serve. The word serve occurs 15 times in this very chapter 15 times it occurs and that is not a mistake it occurs 14 times and the 15th one is the word worship and they are used interchangeably and what this portrays to us is that god is a jealous god when it comes to the worship of god when it comes to whom we give our heart to, when it comes to who has our allegiance 
our attention. Who has our worship? God is a jealous God. In Exodus 7 verse 16, uh, when God was to send out his people from the land of Egypt, he told Moses and Aaron what to say to Pharaoh. Tell him, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. Let them go. And that statement was repeated severally. Let my people go. The, the reason for the deliverance of Israel from the land of Egypt was to worship God, to serve God. And we also see in the Ten Commandments that God said, you shall not bow down to them, that is to idols, or serve them, for I am your God, I am a jealous God. It shows that when our attention is divided between God and something else, God becomes jealous of it. God doesn't want it. God wants total devotion. If you want to follow him, he wants us to follow him. So the word serve, we see here as something that is very, very important. The second thing I want to call your attention to is that Joshua is a type of Christ. Joshua is a type of Christ. Now, in our modern context, I know we don't often use the word typology or typology. Uh, we would rather talk about model. We talk about foreshadowing. Uh, but one thing is this. Uh, Joshua is a type of God. does not mean that Joshua is Christ. But God used uh, this situation to speak to us. To foreshadow what is to come. And we have several cases of that in the Bible. Now, as I was reading and preparing this sermon, I discovered that there are a lot of things that we could say truly God has placed in the life of Joshua or God has used this book uh, to tell us, to tell the human race about what is to happen, what is to come to pass in the future. The first thing that I discovered, there are many things, but I just put these few things here. The first thing is about the name. The name Joshua and the name Jesus means the Lord is salvation. Yeshua, it is the same thing. One is in Hebrew, the other one is in Greek. The second thing that I discover is that Joshua acted as a prophet, as a priest, and as a commander. And we also have references in the scripture that talk about Jesus Christ as the prophet, the priest, and the commander. The commander of our souls. And we also see that jo Joshua came after the law. He came after Moses. M Joshua came after Moses, who represents the law. And we also see that what the law cannot do, Jesus did it. The law came before Jesus, and the law could not save human beings, and God sent Jesus Christ to save the human race. And we see that Joshua led Israel to victory. He led them to the promised land, and Jesus Christ also leads us to victory. The Bible says every day he leads us to victory. Every day. And Joshua sent two spies to cross over Jordan. We also see that Jesus Christ sent two disciples for triumphant entry for them to uh, get the, the donkey that will be ridden on. And he also sent two disciples for the Passover for them to prepare the place and get ready. Joshua advocated for the Israelites after Ai defeated Israel. Now, we also see in the scripture that Jesus is our advocate. And he does that. I can't 
something less than a minute, something less than a minute or less than a second. He does it all the time for us. He advocates for us. The Bible says that he pleads with God every time. Joshua allocated inheritance to the tribes of Israel. And he was the one that gave the portions to them. And we also know that in the end, Jesus is also going to give unto us inheritance. In fact, currently, he, we share inheritance with him. Uh, we are studying Galatians and we see a lot of things that God is telling us. Um, so we see this resemblance, this uh, typology in Joshua and Jesus Christ. And what that is telling us is that God is in charge of Israel. God is in charge of our lives. And God has been speaking and he will not change. He is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. Now, what is all these things telling us? What can we draw from the message that came from Joshua? Just one practical implication I want to give to us today as a church that makes a difference. M-A-D, community. A church that makes a difference. What God is telling us is that there is no room for neutrality. When Joshua says, choose today whom you are going to serve, it means that there is no room for sitting on the fence. You have to decide either to serve the gods that your father served, or you want to stay, stay with God. Jesus Christ also said to us that no one can serve two masters. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now, it doesn't mean that we should not have money. It doesn't mean that we should not work and earn money. It doesn't mean that when we have money uh, that we have worked for, we should throw it away. We are required to be stewards of the resources that God has put in our care. But it means that you, you can worship God and also serve something else. You can serve God and still serve the devil. You can embrace the name Christianity and also still embrace ungodly standard. You cannot embrace this scripture and also live a life or embrace an ideology or a lifestyle that is against this scripture. Working with God means that we have to decide who we are going to work with. Joshua said, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable, if serving God is cumbersome, if serving God is not a good thing for you, he says, then choose for yourselves. This day, not tomorrow, not next time, but choose today whom you will serve. So this is not a matter of let me think about it. I will decide about what to do, who to serve when I retire. Or I will serve him when I'm 65 or when I clock 70. The truth is, who told you you are going to be 70? Who told you you are going to be 80? A man once told me, when I met with him, can you allow your, your daughter to have Holy Communion for her wedding. She wants Holy Communion. But this man doesn't want Holy Communion for the wedding. And will not tell the daughter nor the wife why he doesn't want Holy Communion for her daughter's wedding. So her daughter, his daughter reported him to me and I decided to call him. And during the interrogation, the man 
eventually told me, you know, Reverend, you want to hear the truth? I have taken this thing before. I was confirmed by so 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 bishop in the 60s. But you know what? I still have some sins in my life that I can't drop now. I cannot do away with them now. When I retire, <laughs> I'm going to start taking Holy Communion. I'm going to drop those sins. And now why he said that when he retires is because he knew if his daughter had Holy Communion service, definitely he as a father will be invited to take it. And he doesn't want to take it. So it means all this while you have not been taking Holy Communion. And he told me, yes, I have not been taking it. I will take it when I'm ready to forsake all my sins. And I told him, who told you, you are actually going to retire. Who told you? It was then the man became humbled and he said, Sir, I would like to change my mind today. I, would like, I said, yes, it's possible. God is inviting you and you are giving God dates. You are negotiating with God. The determiner of your heart, the one that has your life in his hand, is requesting for it and you are saying that you will give it to him when you are convenient. He can take it right here as you are standing before me. And he quickly succumbed and asked the Lord to help him and said, okay, over to God. I'm going to let him have his way. Listen, being in relationship with God requires that we choose whether to be faithful to the unchanging God or to some changing competing reality. We have a lot of those realities that are competing with God in our lives, in our society today. And we have to decide the person we are going to serve. If you are here listening to me and you want to understand better what this is all about, it is all about your today and your future. It is all about the father you have to choose and stay with God. It is all about who has your allegiance. Is it God or something else? God's standard, the Bible says to me, remains the same. It remains the same. Whatever you love, you have to question yourself. Will Jesus love this thing? You need to ask yourself. The whole book of Joshua is about choices. And I cannot begin to tell us what this means. In chapter 1, the elders of the people chose to obey Joshua. In Joshua chapter 2, Rahab shows the people of God rather than her own people. And you know what happened to Rahab? Rahab, who was a harlot because she shows God, the God of Israel, she became the great great grandparent of Jesus Christ. Just as there is no room for neutrality, so also there is no room for a divided walk with God. You can't walk with God with one leg in, one leg out. We just have to decide. We have to choose. But know what? As Joshua did not force the Israelites I will not force any of us, and God is not forcing anyone. But whatever you say you do, always judge it by the standard of this scripture. Will Jesus embrace this? Will Jesus do it? What do you choose? Freedom to choose comes with consequences. Since we make shape our lives and determine 
our eternal home. And I want to say to young ones that are here today, uh, the choices you make go a long way in determining your future. And if you are listening to me, you are the time that you have been thinking about uh, what do I become in life in the future. Please recognize God's factor before you choose. Bring God into it. Tell God about it because he created you. He has the blueprint of your life in his hand. You want to choose a career. You want to choose somebody that you want to get married to. I want to tell you marriage is not something that you pick up clothes and you return back to the store and you get your receipt back in your pocket or in your bank. It doesn't work like that. Marriage, the person you live with and perhaps for about 60, 50, 70 years, plus or minus, is something that demands seriousness. It's something that you need to bring God into. Okay? Don't, don't shoot somebody who is going to kick your head. Don't shoot somebody who is going to tell you, I, you can't do what you want to do. Your aspiration in life, you can't do it. Someone who is going to bury your dream. The choices you make go a long way about your life, your decision. The people you meet in life, the choices you make today will determine it. In closing, the bottom line is this. The overarching purpose of our baptismal vows and confession of faith is that you and I will be committed to the service of God in everyday discipleship and mission. I ask you today, are you faithful to your baptismal and confession covenant? Perhaps we need to find time and read it again and again. Remember, you have been called out of thick darkness into the marvelous light of Christ to advance the redemptive agenda of God, not to advance the agenda of the enemy. In today's postmodern and post-Christian culture, where virtually everything is weighed against social and political correctness, we are faced with the same choice. Choose whom you will serve. We can neither sit on the fence nor serve both God and the devil. We can neither embrace righteousness and embrace unrighteousness. Like Joshua, our leaders at home, in the church, and at conference level, must take the lead. I must take the lead. Every dad and mom here must take the lead. Working with God requires that we make a bold choice to serve God only. Loving what he loves and hating what he hates. And perhaps today is our Shechem. Like I told the children that today is Decisions Sunday. And if today is our Shechem, I stand before you today as your pastor to tell you, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will uphold God's standard. We will uphold and support righteousness. And I invite you to do the same. Let us pray. Father, you created us. You made us in your image, after your likeness. We have no reason to reject you. And Lord, I come before you today and I bring this church, this congregation of your people to you. And we say we will serve you. We will follow you. We will love you. We will love what you love. Lord, I pray today 
that you will help every one of us in our daily activities to choose you and to work with you. Today, I commit you into the able hands of the Almighty God, the one who is able to keep you and sustain you and keep your families and order your steps, the one who has your future in his hands. That as we come to the end of this month today and prepare to enter into the month of March, may God's presence go before us May God's presence uphold us. May God Almighty glorify His name in your life. May every step you take be ordered by the Spirit of the living God. And may the Lord Almighty wash your night and your days. And may God grant you His peace. Peace in the morning. Peace in the afternoon. Peace in the evening. Peace all the time. In Jesus' precious name. I pray. And the church say, Amen. God bless you. Have a beautiful week. Let's stand as we sing praise to God. Serving as the way I said, this is the way we should live with you. Jesus, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. Yes, sir. Toby.